It's been a horrible week for UKIP as well. Nigel Farage kept his promise to stand down as leader. He failed to become an MP, but he was back within days, blowing open simmering tensions at the top of the party. So can senior figures overcome their differences? I'm joined by the UKIP Deputy Chairman, Suzanne Evans. Welcome to Good you. Morning. Can you start, before we get going, explain to me exactly what the problems are inside UKIP. Who hates who and why? <laughs> I don't think anyone hates anyone. I generally don't. I think we've had some problem with some advisers around Nigel who very much uh, kept him in their pocket, if you like, and I think he's uh, had too much influence from them. But they've gone and now. they have now gone. Well, certainly Rahim Kassam has gone. I gather he's uh, he's kind of fallen on his feet, really, I think. He's taken a job with Breitbart. Mm -hmm. There's a far-right Tea Party, American, shock and awe style uh, publication. I think he'll problem? be right at home. Was that the problem with them? They Want, they were too aggressive. There was the quote from Patrick O'Flynn about, about the leader being thin-skinned, mm. um, aggressive and shouty or whatever it was. I think actually what Patrick was trying to say, and, and he has told me in private conversations that I think he was uh, slightly misquoted, that what he was talking about was Nigel's public image rather than Nigel himself. And clearly there's a, a big distinction to be made there. So what was the problem with these advisers? Well, I, I think they were trying to take the party back to uh, perhaps what it was several years ago. Uh, I think if you look at the manifesto, and let's not forget that I wrote the manifesto, and I think it was very compassionate, very centre ground, very balanced, and Nigel called it, bless him, uh, the best manifesto ever written, which was, mm. uh, was, a, was a great sort of feather in my cap. And, and that, I think, is where he wants to take the party and where the party needs to be But there was a period when UKIP seemed to be too aggressive. And, and Nigel Farage at the top, top of UKIP was coming across as too aggressive. Is that really what you're saying? Well, I think, you know, we have to make a distinction here, don't we, about, about, about where we need to go for, forward as a party. Nigel talked very much about the shy kipper in this campaign when the opinion polls were coming out, that he's saying there were people who were shy who weren't telling the opinion pollsters that they were UKIP voters. And I think there is an issue there that we have to answer about, well, why are these people shy? If we've got absolutely right, and if our party brand is actually working at the moment, why don't people want to sh uh, sing and dance about it? Was it stuff like, you know, keep people with HIV out of the country? That kind of rather aggressive, slightly uncaring aspect of, of UKIP which came across, was that, is that, was that the problem? There's a very serious debate to be had about health tourism, but there are ways and means of, of saying it, aren't they? And this is certainly a subject that UKIP isn't going to shy away from in mm. future. What does it say about your leader that he can be in the pocket of people like Mr. Kassim? Well, perhaps I, uh, perhaps he's, he wasn't in their pocket, but you know, people, you pay advisors to give you mm. advice. Uh, and I've worked in PR and marketing and you give advice to people and they either take it or they don't. And uh, I obviously wasn't privy to conversations, but uh, you know, I, I think we can really move on from this. I think it's, it's a real shame. We actually have so much to be proud of. We quadrupled our vote. We should be patting each other on the backs, not sharpening the knives. And I think there's been an awful lot of testosterone running Do around this week. And I think now people can, will be able to calm down a bit and we can move forward. Do you think it would have been better for UKIP and perhaps better for Nigel Farage if he'd taken a bit of a break at this point? Yes, and uh, Douglas Carswell has said that he does hope he still takes the break. And let me be absolutely clear. I have spoken to Douglas and people have been reading too much into that statement. So this, is he not, means purely this is not take a break and leave politics forever? Absolutely not. No, nobody wants Nigel to go. He's, he's a fantastic a leader, a great political communicator. He has done wonders for UKIP. Look at where he has got us to just in the last five years. As I say, you know, we were 3% in the, in the general election, mm. we're now 14%. And I think if we can diversify the party a little bit, professionalise, make it more inclusive, there are whole rafts of people there who we're not appealing to at the moment. Women, you know, our, our, our ratings, we're 4% sure. less for women, um, I ethnic minorities. I want to come on to that, but I just want to finish with Nigel Farage. How long a break do you think he should take? Oh, I think a couple of weeks. Oh, no Have a holiday. That. Have a okay. holiday, Nigel. When you, you know, everyone when, needs a holiday. When you read it's that he wants to stay until time. 2035, does that lift your heart or do you think... <laughs> I hope it's a joke. <laughs> I think it's a joke. I think it's a joke. Nobody, uh, he's, he's done this for 23 years. Um, and the trouble and with the one-man band is that if you lose the bandsman, where's the music? Well, this is exactly it, isn't it? I, L Nigel is the last person that wants to uh, have UKIP as a one-man band. And that's why I was, was very careful in the manifesto to make sure that it had not mm. just a quotes and policy from all our spokesmen, but they were photoed in the manifesto as well. It isn't a one-man band. And, uh, you know... A good leader, particularly of an organisation um, like UKIP, which has grown phenomenally quickly in a very short period of time, you have to take uh, feedback. You have to actually sure, solicit sure. feedback. And I'm sure that's what we were doing. We, we have got to look at why uh, we only got one Member of Parliament. And of course, that Member of Parliament will have to be included in debate. He's the one we got across the line. So what is it about his message, about sure. his tone uh, that, that and, actually And your got message now to your colleagues, t enough of all of that, yeah. enough already, belt up? 
absolutely. I think so. You know, as I say, we, we've already made great strides in UKIP. If we can put our differences aside and, as I say, have that meeting about mm. uh, where, we, where we could have done better, then I think we're unstoppable. 13% sure. in the polls, okay. as I say, a huge voting public out there to access. Fraser Nelson was arguing that the big issue for you, of course, is the EU referendum. And there are a lot of people who don't yeah. want to see Nigel Farage as the main voice, the, you know, the, the identified leader of the out <laughs> campaign, because he is a bit of a Marmite politician, even you would Well, how that. very high-minded of them. No, he, I think they need to remember that actually there would be no EU referendum if it wasn't for UKIP and if it wasn't for Nigel Farage, because David Cameron was point-blank refusing to have one for many years, and UKIP and Nigel, uh, with his strong leadership, pushed him into that position. And I, I know you've got Andy Burnham on later. I hope you give him a bit of a hard time. I gather well, yeah, he's I'm, saying I'm that going, we should have an very, EU very referendum now. So, uh, how his views late. have, as they say, evolved. <laughs> but for now, Suzanne Evans, thank, thank you. you very much indeed for joining us.